got a fun soft hackle fly for you this week. This is called the Bradshaw's Fancy. It's been around for many, many years. It's very older, a very much older traditional kind of soft tackle fly. I chose this fly for two reasons. One, if you look at it, it's very similar to another fly that I did a video on called the Black Gnat by Larry Dahlberg. A little bit different materials, but essentially almost the same fly. Don't know if that's where he got the idea for the Black Gnat that he ties, but it's very, very similar. The other thing is, is it kind of reminds me of a woolly worm. Same wool tail. This has peacock curl on the body instead of chenille. And the, the hackle is just palmered up here, just like your traditional soft hackles. It's not palmered through the body like on a woolly worm. But the interesting thing to note is these older patterns like this often are kind of used for the basis of newer patterns. Something very common in fly tying when people are coming up with new patterns for different flies, they think about older patterns that have been around and how you know they, they work and they're, they fish very well, but a tweak here or a tweak there, and they think you know it might work a little bit better. Anyway, not to say that that's how the woolly worm came about, but I just found it very interesting that Bradshaw's fancy is kind of similar to it. Either way, it's a nice soft tackle. It's a lot of fun to tie. So that's the Bradshaw's Fancy, and we'll go ahead and get started. Start our Bradshaw's Fancy by placing our hook in the vise. This is a must add 3906B hook in a size 14. I like the longer shanked hook for this. As you'll see after we make the body on this, Bradshaw's Fancy has a little bit more of a pronounced head to it. And the longer shank hook allows me to have a body length that is still what I, I'm looking for but I still have a little bit of space up here for a little bit more of a thread head on it. For thread, I'm using a Danville 6 aught in red. I'm going to attach my thread after I debarb the hook right behind the eye of the hook. Just run it down the shank about a quarter away. I'm going to tie in the tail piece section now. For the tail on this, I'm just using some red wool. This is just your average red wool purchased at any hobby store, any uh, fabric store. Uh, you could use just an acrylic wool if you want to. It doesn't have to be a natural wool. I'm going to cut a small section off here. Now for this size hook, I don't need the full diameter of this little strand of wool. This has four little smaller strands in it. I'm going to take one strand out. That'll give me about the right density for the tail that I'm looking for. If you're going to tie in a smaller fly, or I should say, if you're going to tie on a smaller hook, then take more out. If you're going to tie on a larger hook, then leave some more in. After trimming that even, I'm going to tie in the wool on the hook shank right where my thread is hanging. And I'm tying it in up here and running my thread down the hook shank simply because it gives me a nicer, smoother underbody for the body of the fly. Once the wool is tied in, I'll trim away the excess. I want a tail that's about a shank length long. Then you can use your bodkin or you could use, you know, a dubbing brush, anything you want that's going to fluff that out a little bit. You don't even have to do this if you don't want to. This will 
as soon as this gets in the water, all of those fibers are going to fluff out. The body of the Bradshaw's Fancy is just made with some peacock hurl. This is just some strung hurl. I'm going to take two fairly long strands out. I want to get some that, it depends on how thick you want the body to be, but the barbules on this, if you get them to where they're very pronounced, you'll have a th little bit thicker body. I'm going to trim the butt ends away. I'm going to tie those in with the excess about the length of the body. I'm going to wrap those down to nice touching turns. Keeps a nice smooth underbody. My thread will end up about an eye length behind the eye of the hook. Now you could palmer this hand over hand if you want. If you're going to do that, and you can, I recommend you just turn the hook over in the vise. And or if you don't have a rotary vise, just take it out, flip it over. Because if I'm going to palmer this around by hand right now, I have to contend with moving out of the way of the hook point plus the thread hanging in the way. But if I turn it upside down like this, then I don't have to deal with that, uh, the thread nearly as much. It's much easier for me to get around that hook point and down here and not have to deal with the thread. However, I am going to use the rotary feature of my vise. Getting the bobbin cradle in place, I will just rotate the hook this makes it a lot easier getting around the point. Now you'll notice that these strands are starting to split just a little bit right here. That has to do with the fact that as you come around the point of the hook, you're going to lose some tension on one strand and sometimes it may drift forward. If you just keep going, what you'll notice is the rear strand will fill in and keep the body looking nice and even, but as you get around the point of the hook and you start getting under even tension again, the two hurls will start to come back together. Just keep wrapping forward till you get a nice full body. You want to stop about an eye length from the eye of the hook. I'm going to secure that in with three or four wraps, keeping tension on my thread. I can then pop away the excess hurl. Now I'm just cleaning this up a little bit. I want to have a nice smooth platform for wrapping in my hackle and finishing the fly. The traditional hackle on the Bradshaw's Fancy is a Norwegian crow. You can substitute starling uh, if you want. One of the problems with starling is, and I enjoy working with starling, it's often used in, wet, uh, in soft hackles. One of the problems with the starling is, is that for a size 14 hook, there are only just a few feathers on this skin that are gonna work for a size 14 hook. I like the hackles to be a little bit long. I like to, them to extend at least to the bend of the hook. And this bird just only has just a few. It looks like there's a lot of great feathers on here, but the barbs on these, the length on them is only going to get back to maybe about the point of the hook or a little bit beyond. Great if you're using tying up size 16s or 18s, but uh, for a size 14, it's kind of difficult. So. You can also substitute, say, a black hen if, if you want, and that's what I'm going to do here. I selected the feather, and I'm going to stroke the fibers down just to get them perpendicular, because then I can measure the length that I'm looking for. And right in this area here is the length of the fibers that I'm looking for. I'll trim away the excess. Holding the feather by the tip, I'll stroke the fibers back. I want enough to get it about two turns on this. You don't want it too bushy. 
I'll trim away the tip of the feather, leaving just a small little triangle for tying this in. I'll wrap this in right in front of the body, coming down just a little bit to make that nice and smooth, make certain it's really secure. Then I'll take my hackle pliers, grabbing the butt end of that feather, I'll stroke these fibers back, and I'll palmer this in. As you can see, you're only going to get about two wraps, and that's fine. Folding those fibers back, I'm going to create the head of the fly. Now you notice this head might seem like it's just a little bit long, but with the Bradshaw's Fancy, you actually want to have just a little bit more of a pronounced head. As I had mentioned earlier, that's why I went with a longer shanked hook. So I've got a body that's about the appropriate length, but I also have just a little bit longer head on this. Trim away the excess. A little bit of head cement. That'll soak down in those thread wraps as well as the base of those hackle fibers and it'll help hold that together a little bit better. As I mentioned, you'll find lots of different versions of this fly out there. It is a, a very old fly. It's been around a long time. Traditionally, this is a trout fly, but I think this is a, it would also be an excellent panfish fly. So I hope you enjoyed that. That's the Bradshaw's Fancy. Thanks for joining me at Device today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.